to the town of Sousa's regular open meeting of council, February 14th, 2023, at 2 p.m. in council chambers. And first off, um, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. <laughs> the, first of all, we will look at the approval of the agenda, and there are no late items, Mrs. Helson. No, there are. Could we have a motion, please, to approve the agenda? Councillor King, Councillor Puerto Rico, all in favor. Thank you. And the adoption of some minutes, regular open minutes from January the 24th, and the special open minute from January the 26th. We have a motion for that. Councillor Chung, Councillor Puerto Rico, all in favor. Thank you. <laughs> so before we start our delegation, I would just like to point out that we have our CAO, Mr. Risling, who is um, sitting in a hotel room somewhere. We're not quite sure, probably in Mexico, but no, I don't think he is. <laughs> but he's joining us, but he's just on the screen. So uh, first off, we have a, um, a delegation, and that would be um, a presentation by Denise Blasco, who is from the South Okanagan Chamber of Commerce. And at um, the last meeting, um, we had asked um, Ms. Blasco uh, and Mr. Duffy for a little bit more information on the business retention, expansion, and relocation program and on the budget request. So please go ahead. Yeah. So thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to come back again. Of course, we have. Uh, Excited to include in that package that you have received from us that we got the letter from the regional district sharing that we have um, participation from all six communities uh, to be able to help us do the business retention expansion and relocation. Mm -hmm. So um, everybody came in at the amount of dollars that we asked for. So $35,000. SCBC has already <laughs> released the $30,000 to us with this letter. Um, and last night we approved at the town of Oliver and they approved our final presentation as well. So that was exciting to get and quite the process to get. That was, I think, a learning lesson for a whole lot of people on how to make something so large in a regional basis happen. Um, the other uh, paperwork that I gave to everyone was our draft work plan. So again, this is a work in progress that we did with the BC Economic Development Association tools, as well as what the Chamber has done over the last several years for um, the r &E. So it starts out obviously in the spring with hiring the contractor, and that's where the detailed work plan will come from, is once we hire the contractors and the consultants, they go and all the business walk data that some of you um, helped us out with. Thank you very much for that. Um, uh, business walk data will be taken in conjunction with interviews that they'll be doing with elected officials as well as town staff and key stakeholders in the region like uh, Community Foundation. Um, we're going to talk with them and a few other people that deal with quality of life issues. And then, then we'll come back with a very detailed um, and official work plan for the year. So this is the one that we have for you for now. So I don't know if anyone has any questions for us on this current work plan. Um, and you've got seven major goals. And uh, and I I think that uh, we appreciate the fact that you've outlaid, laid everything out uh, carefully, and we're glad that you got the money from SABC for that helps a long way. Did you ever figure out how you were going to get the money from the RDOS? Was it going to come as one line some from there, and then they would bill all of their estates? This goes out. Mary McCordoff, no. Um, so the town of Oliver Town and Suites will be remitting their contributions directly. Um, the RDOS will remit phase their okay. Great, thank you very much. Does does anybody have any questions then? Uh, uh, Ms. Blasco. No, looks good. Thank you very much. And we'll at, we'll let you have a seat and we will continue on and we'll let Mr. Zacko do the uh, Presented report. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mayor So, this is in relation to the Chamber of Commerce um, budget request. Um, the recommendation there's two resolutions that, that are being recommended. The first one is that Council rescind the following motion made on December 7th, 2022, that Council provides conditional approval to the South Okanagan Chamber of Commerce request for budget funding in the amount of $20,000 
subject to satisfactory work plan performance measures and financial assistance from the other funding partners. And the second resolution would be that council provide approval to the Southwell Canadian Chamber of Commerce request budget funding in the amount of $10,000 and Southwell Canadian Chamber of Commerce report back prior to the town's budget deliberations on their progress and work plan. CAO's comments was approved for council consideration. Executive summary council conditionally approved the $20,000 to the um, Regional Business Prevention Expansion and Relocation Program, Chamber has applied and received conditional approval of an FCE um, grant for 30000 and we've heard now that um, it's been received, um, as, as long as the other communities involved in the program match the funding. Chamber has reconsidered the scope of the project and is now asking for $10,000 rather than the originally conditionally approved 20000 The Chamber has done a lot of work attempting to coordinate funding and has put together a work plan which is attached to this report. So the South Oak and the Chamber of Commerce Approach Council during the 2023 to 2027 budget, deliberations seeking financial assistance of 20,000 to assist in retention, expansion, and relocation business of the region. Council approved the request subject to the other partners contributing to development of their plan for performance measures. The Chamber has also worked hard in securing the grant funding as well as funding from the other partners. They've also provided a work plan with some performance measures. Uh, the Chamber has reevaluated the plan, like I said, now is requesting $10,000. So options before Council, that Council rescind the motion made on December 7th, 2022. And option two would be that Council provides approval to South Oak County and Chamber of Commerce request for budget funding in the amount of $10,000. Um, option three was that Council request further information and report back to Council. An option four, council approved another amount for the South Oak and Auburn Chamber of Commerce. Certifications under community allows for the retention, expansion, and relocation of businesses in the community. Organizationally, talent supporting the business community. Budget, the request to change for of support from 20000 to 10000 provides the opportunity for the town to allocate funding to other municipal projects. Significant dates, the cha chamber is providing Planning on uh, proceeding with the project February 28th, the delay in granting the request will delay the project plan. And sustainability help e business community provides sustainability for the town and the region. Uh, at this time, I'll pass it back to you. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Zackel. Um, so we're looking for resolution uh, number one, Councillor. I will resolution one. All right, is there a second? Thank you, Councillor Puerto All in favor. Thank you very much. So that's rescinded. And we need now a resolution for number two. Councillor Chong, Councillor King, seconding that, that uh, that they we uh, give them the amount of ten thousand dollars. And Mr. Zackel will um, give them a check. Is that correct? Correct. Is that correct? Did you have a question? Yeah, a question. Uh, I know it's a ten thousand savings. Does that mean just go back into general revenue, or is it identified it was somewhere else? Or? Uh, the money was never spent. Right. Um, so it's in the budget. It is in the budget. Um, so it remains in the budget. So it's just going to now instead of spending 20000 so we can spend some money. Yeah, it's coming out of our economic development account. Okay. <laughs> okay. So it's been moved and seconded. Um, Mr. Zachel, do you have a question? I'll call the question. All in favor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Blasco. That uh, looks like you can carry on. <laughs> Thanks for coming. All right. Um, next is water matters. <coughs> Sorry, loan authorization by law. Uh, so, yeah. so this is loan authorization by law 1383. And it's before council for um, recommendation of first three readings. Um, this is for the water metering project, and it's to ensure that we're securing funding before we proceed. Um, the money will not be borrowed until 2024, but we need to, if, if the project's to proceed, we need to have the loan authorization byline in place. So at this time, I'll pass it to council for their consideration. Okay. Um, so what we're looking for is that the loan authorization bylaw. Number 1383, three, be read a first, second, and a third time. Is there someone who would sure. Thank you very much. Is there a seconder? Thank you. Um, Councillor Appleby. 
Uh, any questions? Any concerns? Yes, go ahead, please. Uh, you, our CEO and you sent us an email last week in regards to some funding that the district or that the uh, Ministry of Municipalities was sending out. Is there any more detail on that? Is that is that the fund that that's the, going the, to the every whatever was ten billion dollars or whatever? The, that said, we have not had any opportunity to actually um, understand how much the town is getting and a uh, discussion of what we could use it for. Yeah, I just, yeah. I, I just want to ask if there's any sure. details yet. No, no, not yet. Okay, so we will, we, it's been moved and seconded that uh, if he passed it or that we read it for a second and third time, all in favor. Thank you very much. And next is the um, uh, the five year financial plan, Mr. Zackel. Thank you, Mayor Cordoff. So this is um, a financial plan by Law thirteen eighty one point oh one for council and um, here for consideration of first three readings as well. Um, being proposed here to adjust our um, five year financial plan to deal with the number of projects that were carried over. Um, from 2022, where a little bit more money was spent on some of the products, um, plus uh, a couple of projects we added with the COVID restart grant funding. So, on the solid waste pile on restructure redevelopment, that project was missed and is being carried forward. Um, road system de designs was reduced to $123,280. Age friendly and accessibility upgrades was reduced to $34,318. Um, the fleet mower replacement um, um, is still in there, but the source of funding in the financial plan was changed, so that's why it's showing on here. Parks washroom upgrades, um, source of funding was adjusted utilizing COVID restart funds. Floor scrubber, scrubber was um, source of funding again for the COVID restart funds. The Snore Center Automatic Taps and Flushers, that project was added with the COVID restart funds. Uh, the washroom for Legion Beach, the, the, that amount was reduced. Um, due to actual funds spent. Generator placement and hookup was reduced to 44,400. Air purification units for municipal facilities is added, and that was a source of funding to COVID restart grant funds. The brush truck, um, um, this is previously not carried forward because we expected it to arrive before at the end of the year. Um, it didn't, so I need to put it into our 2023 budget. And the water tender, the same thing. Um, originally, it was um, not in there, but we thought we were going to have it paid by the end of the year. So that one's added. Under the sewer fund, asset management plan or master plan was reduced to 53,400. Replacement of the Walton Gallo Crescent wastewater pump station was reduced to $568,638. Under water, um, the chlorine system upgrades was reduced to $39,588. OHS upgrades, $218,014. Pump upgrade park irrigation gyro is down to $24,268. Reservoir upgrades reduced at $608,676. And the standby power production well booster stations reduced $118,000. Um, so at this point in time, I'll pass it back to council for consideration of first three readings for questions. Okay, does anybody have any questions first of Mr. Zanko? Okay, so it's been recommended that five year financial plan be read in first, second, and third. If someone who would like to make that, Councillor Chong, thank you. Councillor Cotterica, nothing else. I'll call a question. All in favor. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Mr. Zackel. And we will now look at um, the Okanagan Basin Water Board. Uh, report, which is uh, on page 41. So um, the Okanagan Basin Water Board um, begins climate indicators, looking at how weather is changing, changes in snowpack, rainfall, changes to the growing season. And that's a uh, project that, um, that trying to deal with some things to future-proof the valley. Groundwater water monitoring well expansion to provide greater water data. Now there are two new wells that are being um, planned. One of them monitoring wells, one is near Vernon, 
and the other one is close to a sewage. And here it says west of a sewage, but my understanding it was somewhere between Oliver and Sue along the channel. So that will help um, government planners, water utility staff, and to uh, better understand water supply and decision making. And then the um, the new lidar the topo bathymetric provides um, underwater uh, mapping of underwater elevations on several of the lakes in order to provide data for flood modeling. modeling. And so they're inter investigating interactions between natives, Rocky Mountain Ridge mussel, and invasive milk oil. That's at one point they we were not the Okanagan Basin Water Board was not allowed to. Um, use the milk wild harvester because of the they wanted to protect the Rocky Mountain Ridge mussel, and now they're finding that it doesn't seem to be making the same amount of difference. And so, it there are, had some, we had some overhead shots of where the um, harvester had gone in, and it didn't make any difference to the mussel. So we're hoping that the province will listen to that. <clears throat> so the Water Stewardship Council, which is the technical advisory body to the board um, is having um, they have a new council they do this every two years and actually the the Okanagan Basin Water Board um, uh, directors and the Water Stewardship Council meet in I think it's in May and we have a joint meeting where we get filled in on all of the projects that they're doing and the uh, Seuss Lake Water Science Forum um, that was held in October. Uh, there is on the YouTube channel, there is um, a video, I think it's only about 13 minutes, and uh, gives kind of an overview of what, what, what went on here. And you will see lots of people in the video that you know, and um, several okay. of the water experts spoke. So it's a, it's a good one. The other one, of course, is the River Film, which is also available there, and it was done five years ago. So both of those are on there. So could I please have a motion to um, to accept the the OBWB report? Thank you, Councillor King, Councillor Puerto Rico, all in favor. Thank you. And next we have the South Okanagan Sonoma Fire Mutual Aid Agreement. Chief Courtmeyer. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Through you to rest of council. I've provided my regular open council report on the South Okanagan Simokami um, Mutual Aid Agreement. I'm recommending that council approves the uh, agreement as it stands that the mayor and the corporate officer be authorized to execute the mutual aid agreement uh, expiring on December 31st, 2028. Okay. Um, I, I do like the fact that um, that if council chooses additional reimbursement could be potentially negotiated and added as an addendum to the contract at a later date and i think personally that that's one of the things that's missing and um so i'm happy that that's been included in there and that i hope that that will um, come forward okay um is there anybody who would like to Move the recommendation that's been suggested. Thank you. Not so Puerto Rico. Not for Chong. Seconding that. All in favor. Thank you. Thank you for that. Let me know that you and the CAO did some work on that one. And 57. Next, we have Miss Curtis, who is uh, looking at. Uh, and ALR exclusion after This report is to request council to discuss the second for the ALR exclusion application 2301 or ALC file 67255 to the Agricultural Land Commission for the release of the subject property located at 3621 Lakeshore Drive from the Agricultural Land Manager in order to facilitate the subsequent supervision of the property. Please note that there is an error in the executive summary. The subject property does not need to be rezoned. As proposed, the new law meets the um, minimum lot size requirements for the I-1. So administration recommends that the ALR exclusion application 2301 uh, be accepted and that council authorize staff to proceed with the notification process, which advises the council's intention to consider the ALR exclusion application 
at the March 14th, 2023 council meeting. The subject property is of 0 0.0 to 3 hectares or 0 0.552 acres and has not been previously used for agricultural purposes. The property is bordered by the old golf course to the north, single family suite to the south, and Lakeshore Drive to the west. Should council approve the ALR exclusion, um, the property owner intends to specify it, as mentioned, um, and to do that the a lot, which you can see on attachment four. So, administration supports the applicant's proposal to review the property, and um, because it hasn't been used for agricultural purposes and it's already serviced. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. So, I, I see that there, um, that should we accept this, that there would be a public hearing on March the 14th. So, right. that's the month today. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody? I uh, have any concerns. Oh, no, yeah. I'll just oh. Move off here. Okay, thank you very much. Option one. So somebody said Councillor Pamuka seconding that. All in favor. <clears throat> now that was one A. Do we have to do them separately? Yes, please. Okay. So that would be one A. So now we need um one B, which is council authorizes staff to proceed with the notification process, which advises of council's intention to consider. ALR land exclusion application at the 14th, May 14th, March 14th meeting. So we need to have a motion to that effect. Councillor King, Councillor Puerto Rico, all in favor. Thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> um, next is the Resort Municipality Initiative Report. That would be Mr. Davis. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Before Council is a recommendation uh, to approve municipality uh, initiative grant application request to the Arts Council for their Spring Festival for $6,000, uh, to the Paddling Club for a Flag Race Festival for $4,000, the South Okanagan Pride Society for Pride Arts Festival for $5,253, the White Arts All Howells Festival for $6,000 and for the Artisan Christmas Market for $6,000. Following the last council meeting, um, we actually struck up a committee uh, where myself, uh, Councillor King, Councillor Chong, and Councillor Bennett uh, reviewed the uh, applications, and these are the items that we came up with. Um, in trying to keep everything fair and equitable, uh, we looked at everything from the perspective of of uh, what it brings to the community and how it actually uh, fits the criteria for the resort municipality initiative funding. And that's how we came up with these uh, items. Great. Thank you very much. Um, anybody on the committee have anything more to add or you? Yeah. Okay. So uh, thank you very much for, for doing that. Obviously you looked at everything carefully. So there we're now waiting for a recommendation. from. Option one. Option one that we approve what was uh, recommended. Councillor Chong is seconding that. All in favor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Davis. And um, Mr. Davis, you're on again with the park washroom upgrades. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, so the, the recommendation of the court council is that council authorizes the town signatories to enter into an agreement with Pacific Custom Builders Limited to complete the repairs of park washrooms at a maximum price of $87,000 plus GST. Um, the park washroom uh, project was something that we did last year that carried over. Uh, we had an opportunity uh, since our budget was uh, approved early uh, to get the RFP out. Um, we only received one, um, but that one did come under budget and it was uh, once we check on everything uh, good to go. Um, so now we're bringing this forward, and the intent is to have this done uh, before we open our washrooms up in May. Good. Well, that was um, obviously very clever on your part to bring this out uh, before um, earlier in the year, because last year when this was RFP was put out, there were no applications, right? So um, the all there, it's it's several different. Well, we've got five washrooms that need attention. They're going to deal with all of them, are they? That is correct. Yes. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody who would like to um, move the recommended motion? 
Councillor King, Chair Executive, Councillor Chong, all in favor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. And Thank you. next is the general local government elections. Um, Mrs. Tillerson. Thank you, Mayor Cordo. Uh, a uh, recommendation from administration is that the general local government elections candidate financial disclosure statement report um, for failure to disclose from the director of public services be received for information. Uh, this came to the attention of the administration from elections BC. Uh, one of the candidates for the 2022 uh, general local elections failed to file their disclosure statement by the deadline. Uh, we are required uh, to bring uh, this to a public meeting for council's consideration. So I find it a little confusing because actually the candidate withdrew the application before. But they were still a uh, candidate um, on. on. Oh. Yes, they, even though they withdrew their nomination, they were still a candidate for the election. Uh, so they would have um, been required to file the financial disclosure statement with election species. So what are the next steps with this? Is that that, that you would then? No, it has been, the town is totally removed on okay. uh, the election species and the financial disclosure statements. This is just something that is required to um, the LECFA, which is uh, the uh, elections, which administers campaign financing for elections. And that is totally ran through uh, election BC. So would then be up to the candidate who withdrew to contact them? Yeah. Them? Okay. Yes. Yeah. They totally great. everything is between the candidate and election okay. BC. This is just our requirement um, yeah. through the act to uh, bring this to council for your consideration. Okay. So what we need is a motion that the local government election candidate financial disclosure statement. From the director of corporate services, be received for information. Thank you. That's for John Counselor Barrico. All in favor. Thank you very much. And so the next one is the general net payroll Sun Bowl Arena financial accounts. Um, so as of February 14th, the general cash requirements are $953,372.88. Bundle cash requirements of $23,719.24, and that payroll accounts of $198,988.36. So could we please um, have a motion to have that for information purposes? Thank you. Councillor Clarica, Councillor King, all in favor. Thank you. Gary. Next is um, the summary of the building permits and we have a uh, a demolition um for 230,000 and uh interior alterations for 35,000 so that was for the month of January and so just uh, uh total for the month total for 2020 $265,000 total total to date oh and it was 892,500 last year Okay. Any questions, concerns about that? So could we have that received for information, please? Councillor Puerto Rico, Councillor King, all in favor. Here. Okay, next, bylaws. And that would be the good neighbor bylaw, Chief Portmeyer. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, through you to the rest of Council. <clears throat> um, you have the Good Neighbor Amendment Law <coughs> number 127702 2023 for really two amendments at this time. However, the uh, report as um, considered is that um, uh, the Good Neighbors uh, bylaw be read for the first three readings from Mayor and Council. Okay. Um, is there like it's? I was looking through it. There just uh, there's a couple of things that are a little bit different. That a special permit is required for all uh, fireworks displays. Is that is that how we're adjusting it? Is it? Yes. The one exemption to the old bylaw was that um, the Canada Day celebrations uh, did not require a special event license. Um, this would um, allow them to, or sorry, this would still require them to get the special permit. 
However, they're not going to be charged for it. Okay. And so what that does is it, um, if they're using um, explosives that um, uh, other people need to be aware of at that time, that um, the safety site, the zones, all of that, uh, under the rules, under the Explosive Act and regulations, everybody needs to have that. So by fixing that, it's actually um, making sure that we're following best practices with Industry Canada. The second one is that we, um, as part of the municipality and part of our police service, uh, under the old bylaw, we might not have been able to make noise after those quiet times. So use of lights, sirens, or if there were emergency work that uh, operational services needed to conduct, let's say that uh, we would end up uh, uh, in the Yeah, so mm -hmm. this way it, uh, it writes the bylaw for those two sections. Thank you. Could we have a motion, please, Council, on this that we that would be read a first, second, and third time? Wow. Councilors, Frederick, Councilor Chom, all in favor. Thank you. Okay. By the way, do we allow other people to set off fireworks if they get a permit from you? Yes, under the delegation of authority, the CAO and or the fire chief um, can authorize. Okay. Um, under the same rules of the Explosive Act and regulation that we would permit, it has to be approved. The person yeah. that is setting them off is um, a licensed display um, card carrying member of Industry Canada. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, next is the Delegation of Authority Amendment Bylaw, Mr. Zachman. Thank you, Mayor Porto. So this is a Delegation of Authority Amendment Bylaw 1292.01. And uh, what's being changed in here is one of the sections. Uh, the section being changed is contract to supply services and goods for any amount under $150,000 and subject funding contained within an approved budget. So you know to report on the contract over 30000 and council at the next regularly scheduled meeting would provide that information, lowest bidder only, all others come to council. And um, recommending changes for contract to supply services and goods for any amount that at or under funding in an approved budget. CEO, CEO to report any contract over 30,000 to council at the next regularly scheduled meeting, lowest bidder on the RFQs and highest ranking for an RFP only, all others come to council. So at this point in time, we'll pass it back to council for your consideration. Thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions or go ahead, council? Kind of a question on this. I mean, it's in it, like you said, it's 300,000, I could, whatever the number is, and, and it gets passed, and you pass it today, but we don't need for two weeks to hear about it. So you're happy with it? Well, there, there's always a catch 22. Basically, what that allows for. It allows for the project to start two weeks earlier That's rather than wait. And, and um, is you know, there's a couple a couple factors built into this. It has to be within the approved budget and it's or under. It has to be the lowest bidder, or if it's a request for uh, proposals, it has to be the highest ranking round right. one. So um, it limits administration to only follow those. Um, if there's any other changes, if it's over, if um, staff is recommending the second lowest bidder because they think they'll do a much better job, that's all going to come to council for uh, consideration. But all those concerns are in place already that you mentioned. Um, the only thing that's really changing is the dollar value. Right. Um, so it's kind of going in it for... Well, it allows for, you know, some of these um, infrastructure projects like the water and sewer. It's probably the biggest ones that this affects. Okay, thank you. It's been moved and seconded, so we will have we, but we haven't voted on it. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Don't make them. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, oh it's it's sorry. Yeah. It's only mm -hmm. to stay in the yes. chat. Oh, no, it's not last. Mm -hmm. Are we okay? Yeah, we're okay. All right. So we need a motion to uh, that the authority amendment bylaw be read the first step in the third time. Councillor Puerto Rico, Councillor King. All right. All in favor. Anybody, anybody opposed? Anybody concerned? Sorry, I see some quizzes. 
physical things. And so to to sum it down, it gives basically administration the, the full range of ability to contract contract for services and goods for any amount of period. As long as it's within yeah. budget, like, within or under budget. Okay. Um, but it has to follow a purchasing policy, it has to be um, the lowest um, um through the request for quotations mm -hmm. um, or the highest ranking for request for proposals. So request for proposals were basically there's um ranking parameters built into the um the the tender to evaluate those situations. So and how often do we only get one there? Very, very rarely. Um it's it's happened more in this last year than it has normally. We we usually have quite a number. Um we'll have up to five um, normally. Um so I I, I can't answer why we're having the low number of uh, turnout on it. Um, I know with the parks washrooms one, we tried once before and got nothing. So it just doesn't, you know, it's, it just shows maybe that they're really busy out there in the industry, um, especially our local local um, outfits right now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and did this is quite common, this amount uh, to have this look okay. And there's mm -hmm. some checks and balances in. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have his hand up. Oh, he did for me. Oh, Mr. Risman. Yeah. yeah, maybe I'll just add one thing, Your Worship. Um, I, I think one of the things that's important to note is once we go out for RFP um, and the uh, proponent actually comes in under budget and, and meet, meets all the check marks, we have to award it. So the coming to council um, to give final approval, if, if council said no at that stage, um, we'd be, I can almost guarantee you, we'd be in litigation. Um, that's why even on the, the water uh, metering bylaw that we did earlier today, um, is we're starting to go down that, that process of, of awarding a contract. Um, you know, it's unlikely that we'll require the money and not not require the money until a oh, year down the road depending on what the rfp comes in at but we have to have all those i's dotted and those t's crossed before we go out for an rfp and once we do that we've entered into almost a legal contract so if that contract or that bid comes in at that price or lower we we can't stop it so i just it did, like we so i guess that's one of the that's one of the reasons for this change because there's really no mechanism to actually stop it or we're going to go into legal action. So it's seen as a way to expedite a process that really, that, that can't be stopped anyways. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so have we voted on that? No. All right. So it's been moved and seconded. We did actually, but we had a question, so we yeah. kind of stopped it. So all in favor. Okay, good. Thank you. That's carried. Um, all right, so we will now go on to the CAO report. Is that you? <laughs> That'll be right. I oh, believe. Uh, Mr. Risby, are you giving us the CAO report? I'll give it a shot. <laughs> it seems to me you, you took the binder as well. So little <laughs> Mr. Zappa was looking for the binder today. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, yeah, a few things that uh, went on that I think are of interest to our, our public, uh, and I'm sure some of you are going to be bringing it up, but uh, attended the Rotary First Responders Gala, which was a, an absolutely phenomenal event, and uh, got to acknowledge a lot of our great people within their community, um, and specifically a couple within our area that uh, uh, were highlighted even earlier today, uh, one that received a 40-year, um, uh, been with the with the fire department for 40 years, which is just in, incredible. So I just wanted to make mention of that. Uh, I attended a couple RMI meetings, one on behalf of the mayor and one, there was a meeting with the, the CA, CA group last week. So uh, that's starting to fire up a lot of new counselors around the table. And so there's a lot of renewed interest on this, uh, uh, I guess, special funding that we receive and uh, a lot of great ideas. And we're gonna continue to, I guess, hopefully lobby province to ensure that that funding remains secure. Uh, some of the other things that are happening in the community, coyotes are starting to playoffs. 
uh, February 17th. So that's uh, something good for the community and hopefully they, they do well. We've got a couple uh, things that uh, one just passed on Sunday, February 12th. There was a uh, so, so use, uh, skate library uh, completed a, a grand opening and there was a, a, a free skate and we're always looking for skate donations. So if anybody has a pair of skates, wouldn't mind uh, handing them over to our um, community services area so that other people can actually use those skates. And we have, uh, we were successful on a grant uh, and on family day, there's a, a, a skating opportunity as well as a magic show and a movie and some pizza and popcorn. And that's planned for February 20th. So I think it's a great opportunity for the community to come on down to the, to the uh, Sumble Arena and uh, enjoy some family festivities. Uh, as our fire chief indicated, we're having some issues with the brush truck with their recall. And we also have a, a couple issues with our tender. And so that truck is also out of service. So our two uh, fire trucks that were supposed to be in operation are, are, are not disappointing, but I think it's just showing the complexities and issues associated with supply chains and uh, workforce, et cetera. And hopefully uh, those issues can be resolved soon and we can put those vehicles into use. Uh, a couple other things uh, with, uh, with regards to the planning development area, I always like to recognize some of our new businesses in town. Got a couple change of ownerships, Reflections Guest House and Whistle Waste Solutions of BC Limited. So those were changes of ownership. Uh, change of names, so you use pool services. And our two Huskies are changing their names to co-op. So those, that's uh, going be interesting. There are new signs within their community. Then operational services, it's a sign of the seasons changing. They've been really busy out in the, the parks, uh, doing some pruning and putting in mulch and uh, doing that type of thing. So we're getting ready for the change of the seasons. And that concludes my report. Oh, well, thank you very much, Mr. Rizzing. <clears throat> so could we have a motion please to receive the CEO report? Thank you, Councillor King, Councillor Quadrito, all in favor. Thank you. And then we'll go on to council reports. Councillor Chong. Okay. Um, echoing um, CEO Rizling's report as well, we all attended the gala. Um, always a great opportunity to recognize the first responders in the community. I wish we could do more. Um, and then, aside from that, was I was invited, and and Mayor McCord off as well the following week. They're invited to uh, present at the Rotary Club luncheon. Um, amazing group of individuals, and their uh, their dedication to the community is just so amazing. Um, and that's about it for my report. Yeah, thank you. Yes, Councillor Chong talked to the Rotary one week, and I did the week after, and I said to him, am I just going to walk in and say ditto? But actually, we had a couple of different things we were talking about, so it was good. Very good. They're a great group. Okay, Councillor King. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, it was Sunday. The choice was going to the open free skating sponsored by the town and Rotary are watching the Super Bowl. <laughs> I'm actually glad to say I attended the free skating. And as uh, Mr. Rosen mentioned about the skates, if there's any families out there that have children that would like to skate for the first time, there is a lot of free skates there. They're definitely maintained and looked after. So please stop by. I think you mentioned, is it the 20th, 25th, the next free skate? He was talking about the February 20th. Uh, February 20th. Yeah, February 20th. Peace. We'll see you in the ice cream. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Puerto Rico. Um, and I also attended the uh, Rotary Thunder, uh, Princess Butter Gala on the 26th. Mm -hmm. uh, again, special thanks to Rotary Club and their members for a great event and uh, to the four partner agencies that were involved that night um, for their participation. Uh, good night. Okay, thank you. So, um, yes, as you can see, we also we all went to the first responders gala. It was a very nice evening. Um, I, I just want to make uh, mention that the Special Olympics were on in Kamloops last weekend, and um, uh, I was over at Tim Hortons. Apparently, they sold uh, $2,000 worth of donuts over three days, which was pretty amazing. 
And uh, they sent me a thank you card. And the Osiris Boulders got gold. They got first prize, top prize. So they were very happy about that. Yeah. And um, and also the Sun Bowl Figure Skating Club uh, did extremely well at the Okanagan Regionals. I think it was in Vernon last mm -hmm. week. And several members got um, awards. I think there was a list of them in the paper. I think there was about 10 of them. So well done. I I went to the SOAP, South Okanagan Amateur Players, um, to play at the Frank Vanville Auditorium. I didn't see you there, Chief. I tell you there, one of the others. And it was a really well done play. It was on curling. Don't ask me the whole long title of it, but it was good. It was funny. And it was well, yeah, I, I really like to support those things. They're terrific. Um, so we are very happy with the uh, to get the grant that um, that Mr. Risley mentioned, the 1.66 million dollar grant for the well protection of Anasuyas, and um, that's a great thing. We're also part of the Growing Communities Grant, which was a million dollars that the provincial government is giving out to all municipalities in the province. So we have no idea how much our section or our amount will be because uh, that probably depended on population. Uh, but we're looking forward to having, uh, to getting that information and looking at how we can um, use that money wisely to deal with our strategic priorities. And we have plenty of them. So um, we have lots of, uh, uh, lots of options there. Uh, and um, that's all that that uh, that I had for today. And so if spring is here, I think um, it depends which groundhog you listen to. But um, <laughs> but there are some that said yes, spring is coming. So certainly I've had um, trees pruned and uh, that type of thing. So that is always the start of spring at my house. So thank you very much, everybody. And um, we will have a, Sir um, King, you missed it this morning, so we'll have to let you do this now at the termination meeting. Is that what you'd like to <laughs> do, please, yeah. Councillor Chong is seconding that. All in favor. Thank you, everyone.